Welcome to Certified Emergency Nurse Practice Test. Our topic today is cardiovascular emergencies. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. A 60-year-old male with chest pain is brought in by emergency medical services. As he is being evaluated, the rhythm on the right appears on the cardiac monitor. At the same time, the patient loses consciousness and you are unable to feel a pulse. Which of the following is the most appropriate action for this patient? A. Giving epinephrine. B. Giving atropine. C. Defibrillating at 120 to 200 joules. D. Doing synchronized cardioversion. The correct answer is C defibrillates at 120 to 200 joules. Explanation, this rhythm is ventricular fibrillation. Ventricular fibrillation is one of the deadly shockable rhythms that must be treated immediately. The appropriate intervention is immediate defibrillation at 120 to 200 joules of energy. Because there is not an organized rhythm, synchronized cardioversion is not indicated. Number 2. You have defibrillated the patient in ventricular fibrillation. The appropriate action to take next is a. Do cardiopulmonary resuscitation for a two-minute cycle. b. Obtain an electrocardiogram to determine the rhythm. c. Defibrillate again at a higher dose. d. Give intravenous epinephrine. The correct answer is a. Do cardiopulmonary resuscitation for a two-minute cycle. Explanation, the 2010 Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support Guidelines no longer recommend stack defibrillation. Instead, a two-minute cycle of cardiopulmonary resuscitation should be done as the defibrillator is charging. Number 3. The patient is on the monitor with the rhythm on the right. The patient is not responsive, not breathing, and no pulse is palpable. The most common reversible causes of this rhythm are called the H's and T's, that include all of the following, except A. Hypovolemia b hypoxia c toxins d tyrosinemia the correct answer is d tyrosinemia explanation the h's and t's include hypovolemia hypothermia hypo or hyperkalemia hydrogen ion excess hypoxia hypoglycemia tamponade tension pneumothorax thrombosis toxins and trauma Tyrosinemia is the inability of the body to break down the amino acid tyrosine. Number 4. A 76-year-old man is brought in by emergency medical services with distended neck veins, tracheal deviation and asymmetrical chest expansion. What should immediately be suspected? A. Pulmonary embolism. B. Tension pneumothorax. C. Second-degree heart block. D. Asthma. The correct answer is B. Tension pneumothorax. Explanation, tension pneumothorax occurs when a lung is fully or partially deflated. Lung deflation will change the pressures in the chest causing the trachea to deviate in the chest to expand only on the unaffected side. Number 5. A 41-year-old patient without diabetes or renal disease is being examined. A systolic blood pressure of 145 mm of mercury would be classified as A. Normotensive b prehypertension c stage 1 hypertension d stage 2 hypertension the correct answer is c stage 1 hypertension explanation normotensive is a systolic pressure less than 120 prehypertension is a systolic pressure of 120 to 139 stage 1 hypertension is a systolic pressure of 140 to 159 Stage 2 hypertension is a systolic pressure greater than 160. Number 6. Which of the following is the most effective treatment for bradycardia, heart block and already of ventricular rhythms? A. Atropine. B. Pacemaker therapy. C. Epinephrine. D. Amiodarone. The correct answer is B. Pacemaker therapy. Explanation, pacemaker therapy is utilized when the heart's intrinsic pacemaking system is inadequate. In the emergency department there are two effective forms of pacemaking, external, transcutaneous, or transvenous. Both are used until the patient can receive an implantable pacemaker. 
Atropin reverses cholinergic mediated bradycardia and is not useful in type 2 second degree or third degree heart blocks. Epinephrine is a positive inotrope used to increase the heart rate, but not the most effective. Amiodarin is for wide complex tachycardia. Number 7. A pediatric patient weighing 10 kg is to be cardioverted. What is the correct initial energy level? A 10 joules. B 12 joules. C 20 joules. D 22 joules. The correct answer is A 10 joules. Explanation, pediatric patients requiring cardioversion should be initially cardioverted with 0.5 to 1 joule per kilogram. A patient at 10 kg can be cardioverted at 10 joules, then may be increased to 2 joule per kilogram if the initial one is ineffective. Number 8. A 52-year-old male was recently discharged home from the hospital two days after suffering an acute myocardial infarction. He presents today with chest pain with deep inspiration that is improved with sitting upright and leaning forward. The patient is tachycardic on the monitor and has an audible pericardial friction rub upon auscultation. What condition is the patient exhibiting? A. Pericardial tamponade. B. Endocarditis. C. Angina. D. Pericarditis. The correct answer is D. Pericarditis. Explanation, pericarditis clinical manifestations include tachycardia and pain that is exacerbated by deep inspiration, coughing, lying in a supine position, but is relieved by leaning forward. A common cause of pericarditis is status post-myocardial infarction, usually occurring two to three days after a myocardial infarction. Number 9. The left anterior descending artery supplies blood to which part of the heart? A. Septal. B. Posterior. C. Inferior. D. Lateral. The correct answer is a septal. Explanation, the left anterior descending artery supplies the septal, anterior and anteroseptal parts of the heart. The left coronary artery supplies the lateral, anterolateral, and sometimes the posterior. The right coronary artery supplies the inferior and sometimes posterior. Number 10. Which is the most common complication of myocardial infarction? A. Cardiogenic shock. B. Cardiac death. C. Dysrhythmias. D. Heart failure. The correct answer is C. Dysrhythmias. Explanation, cardiogenic shock can occur with Lieber congenital amaurosis and left anterior descending artery involvement. Sudden cardiac death is seen with left anterior descending artery involvement. Heart failure is often anticipated but dysrhythmias, especially sinus tachycardia, sinus bradycardia, atrioventricular blocks, atrial and ventricular dysrhythmias are most common. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.